Hello, welcome to part 19. Guess I should turn the lights on. There we go. Hello, and uh, welcome back to part 19 here in the Hearts of Iron Complete Beginners Tutorial. Without any further ado, let's get on in. Da, 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 da. I do like the tune that plays when you first drop into game, and then, of course, that is that. All right, let's carry on. So last game, of course, we took Lithuania. We did a few tidying up procedures after that. We also declared or, or began justifying, should I say, war against Denmark. We certainly didn't uh, declare war on them. I think what I'm going to do is carry on using my Fields Marshal here. I think these two played together fairly well. Uh, Rommel uh, together with Bok. So we'll bring these guys over again. Zed with the Field Marshal and draw front line. Now there are 30 divisions. Or 32 in divisions in total. Clearly they're not all going to fit, but they're, you know... That's a Field Marshal's problem. Uh, we'll see uh, best as what he can do. Okay, so just before we unpause, let's slow time down just a little bit, as we always do when we load in. Free dockyards, let's get those away. So I'm scrolling down to the bottom of the list, and uh, let's switch over to Navy F2. Let's actually see what craft we've got spare. So we've got one light cruiser that's spare, that is all. Uh, so I think we need to increase our sub production. We're definitely sort on uh, U-boats. So let's click to build more ships. Let's come over to the U-boat and get another line of U-boats. Actually going to bring those up behind the other U-boats and I don't know. Let's put a foot four dockyards there. Of course, there are only two available, but as soon as the next two get built, they will come online also. Now, to make use of that light cruiser, let's have a look on our uh, surface ships. I think I'm actually going to stick the light cruiser in with the destroyers that are on patrol. We've got three destroyers. So I'm going to open my Task Force Composition Editor. And remember, this is for the surface fleet. So the U-boat guy, the surface fleet. So hopefully by now that should have been obvious to most people. So again, select him. Selects all the fleets. We're only interested in this one here, so we can select that. The surface fleet. You can already see these have actually got some, uh, you know, they've helped to destroy some things. So if we open the task force here, light cruiser, we'll just drop the one in. Okay. And hopefully this will improve the ability to do what they're doing even more. Okay, let's hit escape. A uh, quick look on the air. So F3 will come over to Brandenburg. Okay, great. These guys are fully trained. This was a uh, fighter wing that's actually been training for a very long time. Uh, so we'll cancel their training. We'll set them over to air superiority mode. I'm actually going to give them to a general that currently doesn't have any fighters. Actually, this general over here, he's got, he's got combat air support, uh, ironically, but not, uh, not fighters. So we'll right-click there. Now, at least he is involved. Okay. Speaking of getting that general involved, let's at least bring them over towards the western side. Certainly, although everything here is going well for us, you see France are attacking. There is, of course, a, a small possibility at some point they may break through. So at least to bring some of these generals over towards the west Germany would be better. Now, I'm not going to draw a front line because that, of course, would... Um, put too many soldiers right on the spot and not necessarily that it would be too many but I'm not trying to do that it's just if they break through so again we'll make use here of the area defense with this general and we'll just bring him you know just over to this sort of part somewhere like that okay now uh, let's do the same with this guy uh, we'll occupy the state there uh, Manstein, who is uh, general with a tank, he's still only got one tank panzer division. We'll see if we can uh, recruit a few more. But for now, let's have him uh, over there at Leipzig and this general here, area defense. And yeah, we'll just pick a similar area down here as well. Uh, cover over by Munich. Okay, let's hit escape. So let's recruit these new panzer divisions. So I want, if possible, um, at least two, if not three more Panzer Divisions, as well as a couple of motorized divisions. Let's see if we can do all of that. So I'm going to select train. Once again, location, bang on Brandenburg. And I'm this time I'm going to make sure that I've got equipment from all. If I don't have equipment from all, 
I will delete ho however that much was. So first off, we only want to do this one time. So two divisions. Do we have enough for it all? Yes, we do. Add unit. Do we have enough for three? Yes. Add another one. Do we have enough for four? Yes. Okay, so let's recruit the whole four. And again, it's just going to be done the one time. We'll collapse that to tidy things up. Truck divisions. Train. Do we have enough? Put it over into northern Germany again. For one division, yes, we do. We only want it the one time. Do we have enough to recruit two divisions? Yes, we do. Um, I only want two for the Panzer Division, but let's see if we can get another division for somewhere else. Yes, there's a third. Can we get a fourth? Yes, we can. So that there is enough. So I'll set those guys on the go. I think that's fine. One of the things that you'll find in this game is it's very easy to get tunnel visioned on doing a certain thing. So, oh, I need to take more countries. So I'll go over there, then I'll go over there. And unless something jumps out at you on the notification menu, it's very easy to just negate it. So, for example, if we come over to our recruitment menu, one of the things we wanted to do, if you remember on last episode, was get the anti-tank infantry and improve it some. Well, we've got a few army experience points now to do just that. So we're going to add over here combat support battalion. Uh, oh, we're one point short. Uh, we're one point short. How typical. OK, we'll deal with that as soon as we can. One thing that we could do, though, is just get a couple of these guys recruited. In any case, as you can see, they're not currently being recruited. So let's hit train. And again, somewhere not a million miles from the capital. Let's go to Osmart this time. And we'll just do it as a one time thing and add units. Add. let's put four divisions in okay there we go and we'll set it repeating once we've had the chance to tinker with the template take a look over here we've got a little red line on the delete template from list that simply means we actually have no divisions in the field that are this particular cavalry division now you may be tempted and sometimes yeah okay but i always find now nah, just decommission it and then if you ever need it you don't waste points on setting it up the way it was Okay, let's hit escape. Let's unpause. Let the game catch up with itself. We'll pick up the pace some. But of course, after every save, we get these uh, blue crosses. Again, to do with the traits. Let's just check that there is nothing there. So that's Rommel. No. Guderian. No. And... Uh, what's his face? Manstein. Uh, no. And again, not that guerrilla fight is a bad thing. It's just they're not necessarily the most useful trait to go with an offensive panzer division. Okay, looks like air experience has just ticked over. At least it has for me. So let's look at the doctrines. And again, we're just working down the list. Remember, this one here was an either or. So we can't have both, unfortunately. But let's go ahead, get hunt and destroy. And again, if you don't yet have the 100 points, as soon as you do, just progress down that list. Now we do actually have 26 army experience points. So if you also do have... Just go ahead and come over to the recruitment menu this time. Anti-tank. Now we are going to make the change. So come over here. Combat support battalion. And if we take a look at the stats here. And again, this is this division is very specifically for going up against enemy tanks. So we'll put another anti-tank in. Hard attack goes from 31 to 53. And again, think of this. How many attacks per hour we are able to inflict. And again, if the enemy's got tanks, this is... It's not quite double, but it's on the way. Take a look at organization takes a little bit of a tumble. So again, it's a trade off between, um, OK, we can fight for less long by 5%, but we're able to inflict almost twice as many uh, attacks. So overall there, that's uh, that's a positive. Uh, so we will save that there. Notice combat width jumps up to 19. Um, so, OK, that that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Um, if it does become a problem, we will recruit another uh, anti-tank division here and actually get rid of one of the infantry divisions, and that'll knock it back down to 18. The reason being, uh, infantry divisions are two combat widths wide, whereas the anti-tank uh, division, or, or, or the anti-tank battalion, should I say, is only one combat width wide. Uh, so two of these equates to one of these when it comes to combat width. There's a whole 
thing on combat width i've i've done a video dedicated just on combat width uh, i think for a very beginner it, it's kind of a bit much but once you've finished this series definitely check that out okay let's save that we've got just enough points to do it uh, if you don't make that change as and when you can save okay let's come away on pause uh, these guys more or less into position, so let's right click. How long have we got? Uh, I've got about two, just over two weeks left. You can see there, 10th of November, it's going to be ready, so not long at all. Just have a hover over. Okay, so this is a good thing you can do from time to time. I realise I'm pausing it here because I'm having to explain what I'm saying, but uh, ordinarily I wouldn't pause, right? I would hover the mouse over here. Okay, I've got more green than red in this case. Three green, no red, so that's a good thing. So I know navy-wise there's very little there that I have to change up. So rather than going around necessarily clicking on each individual thing, although by all means if you if you want to do just that, you can do. This here was actually not too bad. We did lose a sub, but look at everything we were up against there navy-wise. Uh, we did very well to only lose one sub. Okay, so again, hover over, more green than red. Okay, right-click, get rid. Same over here. More green than red, right click, get rid. Quick glance at the air situation. Actually, things are red over the Alpine region. Things are still yellow in uh, Western Germany. So it looks like this whole bomber thing that we'd uh, wrapped up last episode has actually returned. Uh, fighters lost 25, enemy fighters lost 65. Okay, I'm not entirely happy that I'm losing 25, but if the enemy's losing about three times as much as I am, that's okay, especially once you factor in the enemy bombers, which are, of course, a lot more expensive than fighters. I am, however, concerned over what's going on here with the Alpine region. Uh, if we take a look at that, there are enemy aircraft there with superiority. So I'm going to have to probably get an air wing down there. Now, one of the things we haven't done for a while is see, well, do we actually have any aircraft uh, that we can train? So let's come to Brandenburg, add a new air wing, uh, fighter wing just the one again if if i was to recruit another one i'd probably use up all my fighter reserves which would mean actually actually i do have a few spec because look at this we've got four different types of fighters and again you can see that by looking at the types here so if we add all of these numbers up there is actually well over a hundred there so in other words even if i recruit a second air wing which i'm going to do once planes get shot down elsewhere, we still have a few here in reserve. Not necessarily the same aircraft type, but at least there's something. So we will do that. Let's scroll down. Anything else here? Close air support? Not quite. Uh, Interwar bomber. Again, we added some of these together. Are there over 100? Just. So let's recruit one of those. Uh, naval bomber. Is that over 100? Just. So let's get that recruited. Okay. So with these new guys, so let's just click on those ones. We don't want to set the existing guys training and we'll start the exercises. So we've got a fighter wing there that's currently under Army 8. Now, I actually require them in the Alpine region urgently. So again, let's pick an airbase within the Alpine region. Uh, let's go for this airbase here. Right click. Detach, of course. Yes. Air superiority selected. So once it's there, what to do? Well, right click onto that region, as in, do your air superiority this specific mission in that region. There it goes as we unpause. There it gets into the sky. Let the game tick for a few hours, then click on it. So now what's the situation? Well, we've got 100. Now they've upped theirs to more like 300. Okay. I'm not convinced I'm going to have enough aircraft to just keep putting more and more planes here, but uh, I do have at least a few. Um, let's select this air wing here that was covering eastern Germany that doesn't seem to have a problem at the minute. Right click down here, right click onto the area. I realize we're still going to be outnumbered a little bit, but unfortunately, well, let's unpause. There we go. I just don't think we're going to entirely have enough. So let's left click here. And now it's gone yellow. So this is already an improvement. We can see that our enemy actually has a few ground missions. And the Alpine region, although this is just a singular air block, if we come over to the army view of the F1, 
we can see this is actually split between three if not four countries we've got the southern part of germany we've got the northern part of italy uh okay the, this area here is not included but also what's included is uh swiss here or, or i was gonna say sweden but it's not it's switzerland um so there we go so this one air tile covering in this case three separate countries so uh it's probably to do with what's going on here between france and italy but again if we help out a little bit it's going to help out our ally and they're going to lose a little bit less so definitely making use of that and of course because this tile also affects southern ends of Germany here, we'll actually be losing uh, or getting factories damaged and so on. May even be worth coming over to the construction menu, anti-air, and I don't know, let's just drop in on this very extreme here, an anti-air turret ability on the tile for that specific state. Uh, Vorarlberg or whatever it is. There we go. Okay, let's unpause. Let's have a quick look with the guy who's training. Big pause there as we get round to the 1st of November. Okay, now Bok is um, on the front line if we select him and he's almost got everybody there versus this state here. Now take a look at all the divisions under Bok. We don't have any any dedicated anti-tank infantry guys, so I'm actually going to pull off a couple of the existing ones. Now, the reason I'm selecting this one is I always pick the lowest experience ones to pull away from him because I'm going to redesignate them anyway. Uh, so let's take these two divisions for argument's sake. We'll bring these over to the training guy. And with the training guy selected, let's get the two anti-tank divisions we created and we'll send those uh, out to box. So there we go. Box now got the 424. Uh, have we got any other old divisions here? Um, he's all pretty much up to date. What about this guy? Oh, he's still got a few old ones. And here we can see actually a lot of these Mountaineer Special Forces have perhaps not done so well. Uh, or at least these two divisions. So let's bring the two. And again, on your game, if you've got any divisions here, just bring like, I don't know. Let's just say bring four divisions. If you see he's got four divisions that are not on the Silver Star, just bring them away from this guy. Right click onto the training army and replace those with four divisions that are ready to go. One, two, three, four. I'll just give them, them back by right clicking. Okay. This guy here that's on the front line with France is okay. Uh, 12 divisions. We could always give him a couple more. If you've got any here that are left, let's just click those two. Right click on him and again he'll move those over. Okay. One thing that I want to do is some of these older divisions, so again, the ones with just the helmet, uh, I want to think about upgrading. Now, you can't upgrade foreign divisions that they've given you. You can either use them or give them back to their country. Those are the only choices you have. In my opinion, you may as well use them for, for as long as they let you until they tell you that they want them back. And usually you get a, a small window of warning that says, I want them back. Uh, so once we've got them trained up we'll make use of them so i'm going to double click on my old templates here i've actually only got three and i'm going to look to switch them over to the uh, newer style infantry 18 check i've got more than enough equipment which i do okay escape on pause quick check on the navy screen that looks pretty good happy with that most of the action actually down here on the iberian coast Quick check in on our sub guy and yeah, look at this. A lot of these flotillas, look at this, are way short. So <laughs> look at that. Every single flotilla that our U-boat guy has got, every single one is currently engaged in action. And as we see, some of these flotillas are short on U-boats. I mean, take a look at these. Some of these have only got three out of the ten. So remember, these were all fully stocked up once we when we kicked off. Now, you're going to run out of U-boats. I'm going to run out of U-boats if I keep this up. So what I'm going to do is select all of my U-boats, which they will be if we just select him without de Oh, sorry, this guy, the U-boat guy. If we don't select any particular flotilla, all of them are selected. 
Now I'm going to come over here to the rules of engagement. We've got medium, we've got high, we've got always, do not, and then we've got low. I'm going to set this to low risk because if I keep this up, I'm going to run out of ships before long. So let's set it to low risk and they will carry on doing just that. Once I get the numbers back up pretty much to full strength across the board, I will look at increasing that again. Okay, worth checking out there. Uh, surface, flotilla guy, everything everything there looks good. Uh, nothing, nothing that I see that needs changing there. Okay, escape. Quick look at what we've got here. Reserve I actually got a spare destroyer. So let's come over to surface flotilla and I'm looking to this top flotilla here. See, we've got 12 destroyers. Let's select it. We've got three heavy cruisers. We are expecting a... Actually, let's have a look under my production. Was it cruiser or was it... No, it was battleship. Sorry, it was battleship. So let's select our service fleet again. The one that's got the battleships, this one here. We've currently got 12 destroyers. Remember my sort of rule of thumb is uh, four destroyers per capital ship, although everybody's going to tell you something different. I'm going to up this to 16 destroyers because, of course, we've got two battleships in the oven. One's nearly ready, one's going to take a while, so we may as well get that flotilla sorted. Let's unpause, hit escape, back to F1. Denmark, how are we doing? Just five days left. Okay, so hover over the ships. More green than red, good. Right click, hover over the ship. Green, good. Insufficient resources, just a small issue there with tungsten, not really an issue. Field hospitals, okay. Pause, we've got more research available. Okay, um, let's have a little look. These are being done. Uh, we do have uh, mechanized infantry uh, not too far away currently, of course, making use of trucks. Mechanized gives us a bunch of bonuses, but also quite a bit more expensive to produce. Um, so we'll definitely look at unlocking that, but not just yet. Instead, uh, infantry uh, industry, should I say, is way too far ahead. I tell you what, let's go for the new radar. It's it's only, uh, what's that, like a couple of months ahead of time. Uh, it's going to take 100 days to do and, of course, a whole bunch of bonuses. So let's go get that one on the go. And pause. Pause. There we go. Justification complete. So we'll click OK. We'll slow time down to the minimum. With the field marshal selected, we didn't. Have, I actually forgot to give him the uh, attack order to to get that bonus, but that's that's not a problem. I'm going to hit X to go for uh, this area here. I say it's not a problem. I mean, it's far from ideal, especially if I'm doing a tutorial. There we go. So that's where he's going to go. It may be tempting to go towards the north, but what I found is once you get the capital here, uh, which I think is Copenhagen, once you once you capture the capital. Uh, the, the country capitulates. So I think what I'm going to do as well to make sure we're not short on supply, I'm going to change the entire, f the the field marshal's motorization up to level three. So this uh, will actually affect the field marshal and everybody that's beneath him. So in this case, Rommel and Bok. So in other words, if I was to go through Rommel and Bok now, both of them would be motorization level three. I'm also going to tell my field marshal to go super aggressive because I want it to be, you know, I just want him to go for it. And while that whole thing is on the go, just before we unpause, let's get the Netherlands uh, declared so we can start going through Netherlands, then Belgium, and then into France. Again, those of you that know your history will know, although we are already at war with France, we don't want to push through the Maginot line. We can do some... Crazy stuff like pull back from the front line, sucker the French in and then encircle them. That's a more advanced way of playing. Perhaps we'll look at that one day. But for now, let's just break through uh, the, the, you know, the uh, historical narrative front door, which is the best way of doing it. So right click onto them, justify. And again, make sure you wait until the other justification is complete. Otherwise, you'll suffer that penalty from declaring on multiple countries at once. I'll just demonstrate this. So if I declare here, it's only going to take me 30 days. OK. Now, if I also try and declare over here onto Belgium, justify. OK. 
Now look at that, 110 days. Well, that's far too long. So actually the best way to do this is to wait the 30 days, attack the other one, and then straight away declare on this one that it will be much quicker. So let's cancel that one because of course Netherlands is the only one we're interested in declaring for now. So with the available war goal here for what's going on up here, let's select this, let's declare war. Allies, why not? Okay. Okay, and again, by the time they get there, it's all going to be over. Hit escape to tidy up that menu some. Kick him into gear. Add with the speed on the minimum. Unpause. I always like minimum when I start, because again, if there's anything mistake or you've forgotten anything or missed anything, you'll see it within an hour or two of war as opposed to a days or, you know, which is, you know, if you've made a big mistake, you certainly don't want to get it wrong by days. All right. Okay. Zoom in, here we see the battle taking place, and despite not having the advantages of the preparation bonus, you see this is still going fairly well. If we click on it, we've got six divisions stuck in, and again that's limited by the combat width there of the tile, which is currently 105. Looks like we're going to break through shortly. Name sounds do go loud, let's uh, up the pace. Actually, the three divisions there held remarkably well. That's one of them backing off. And there they go. We've broken through the door. Now, some of our army may be... Okay, let's get rid of this. Some of our army may wish to continue the chase with the enemy over there, which is, of course, fine. What I'm going to do is the first little bit of micro in this game, so I've just paused it. So we'll just select these three divisions. It's hardly the micro of the century, but let's just select them. And we're going to right click here, holding shift, right click onto Orden Z, then right click over here, and then last but not least, right click onto the capital Copenhagen. So that will ensure our panzers take that specific route. Let's unpause. And regardless what the generals are doing with the rest of the divisions, these panzers are now going to push through this way. And again, as soon as they roll into the capital, with a bit of luck, that should be it. Actually, this division holding a little bit better than I would have thought. So let's press plus, speed up the time. 98, 99. And once our panzers break through, they should keep on rolling. There they go, there they go, there they go. The panzers have completed the takeover. Pause. And Denmark is ours. Once again, we get a whole bunch of stuff, including 56 trains. Okay. Great news. So let's actually come over to our production menu. Go to the top. Remember, we set uh, civilian trains on the go ages ago. We're producing three trains a month currently with that solitary factory, but having just inherited another 56, we currently have 151 trains. Not in totality, we've got a lot more than that. We've got 151 trains in addition to everything that we need. So I don't think we need to produce any more trains at the minute. I think we could use our factory uh, for something else. Hopefully as we conquer more countries, we'll be capturing more trains and we can forget about this, at least for now. So let's cancel that production line and that spare factory can go help out with something else. Okay, new doctrine available and taking a look here, that's going to be Navy. Okay, great. And again, down in the U-boat, we've got a Wolfpack doctrine, bunch of modifiers, all green, all good. No reason not to have it. Let's get it. Okay, so we know who's next on the menu. It's the Netherlands. If we take a look, we're eight days in of the 30 days. It's going to be ready on the 10th of September or on the 18th of November. Once again, I'm going to bring the same field marshal in. But before I do, I actually want to get another panzer uh, army in. Heinz Guderian, who's so far just been sat twiddling his thumbs for the last uh, conflict or so, Going to right click onto the bin to delete any orders that uh, Heinz Guderian may have. So we'll, uh, with the general selected, right click onto the bin. OK. I'm now going to reassign Heinz over to the field marshal on the left. So again, with Heinz selected, left click, right click onto the field marshal. And 
That'll do for now. So now we've got two Panzer armies, Rommel and Heinz, together with Bock, the infantry. And these three generals are going to work under Rundstedt, the field marshal, to attack. So again, Zed, let's create the front line. And this time, let's get an attack order in so that they can start planning. Great thing about this game, you don't need to wait for them to get there in order to do the attack planning. You can set the planning on the go and the field marshal get on with it. So Z, front line, X, with the field marshal selected. I'm just going to draw, right click, drag to the far end of the country. There we go. And unpause. He'll move everybody down and this uh, general up. Okay, let's have a little look. Right click there. Okay, neutrality did not save Denmark. Okay, pause. And again, pausing because free civilian factories. Hopefully you can start and see now that not only that Spacebar is your friend, but you're starting to see that every time you get free civilian... Certain messages, news results, you don't need to pause. Just okay, okay, get rid of those. Free factories, pause. Um, you've got research available. Unless you're really going slow, pause. Um, that kind of thing. So... Again, we've got a few things on repair. Let's have a little look. Radar stations, they're ra not re yet ready to upgrade. Let's have a look on the F3 menu. And again, this is the air situation. Alpine region is still a little bit of an issue. So I'll tell you what, let's come over to the anti-air page and let's just improve. So one over here, let's put one more anti-air on Tyrol. We've got upper Austria and we've got lower Austria. Let's just put an ant another anti-aircraft gun on all of those. That's going to happen relatively quickly. So let's then... Oh, what else are we going to queue up? I don't know. A few more civilian factories. Uh, this state here was being upgraded, the road network. It's almost on level 5. Um, so I'll tell you what. Military factories shift and we'll stack those up. But civilian factories, we wanted to make use of those. Ah, uh, let's go. One, two, three. There we go. Okay, that is enough orders for now when it comes to the construction stuff. Let's escape. F1, come pause. Speed up time. Again, anything that crops up that needs dealing with, we know what to do. Hopefully by now you're beginning to get the hang of the basics. I, you know, I'd love to think so. December 39. Shift, left click, a whole bunch of divisions just passed out of training. Right click onto the training army. And it's actually getting to the point where I've got so many divisions, I'm ready to recruit a new general. So some of these divisions up here that are ready. Shift, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Right click onto the blank portrait here. Let's hire up a new commander, somebody that's reasonably good with infantry. Again, not the end of the world if they've got a panzer trait. Because, um, again, we're not really going to have that many divisions with panzers. The reason I'm not going for this guy is this particular general here, the one in the blue, as well as this one, are good for paratroopers slash special forces. So, if at all possible, I'll try and save those two. This is a good general, however, for infantry. General Willem, <laughs> Willem Ritter von Lieb, <laughs> whatever, uh, plus four. So let's get him hired on. It's not the best when it comes to uh, skill or uh, co supply consumption. But, you know, again, he's a level three, not a level four. Once we get him stuck in, though, he will start and improve. So let's hire him onto the case with these guys. And I'll tell you what. It doesn't hurt things. Let's have him on the line with Yugoslavia just in case. Because sometimes Yugoslavia can go either way. So I'll left click on this guy. I'll right click under this field marshal. Again, the bonus is stacked once we do that. We'll left click on this guy again. Press Z and we'll draw a little front line. Now, of course, because Italy is an ally, we can draw a front line in their territory. However... Not that we don't care about Italy, but, you know, it's more important we get our line covered. So right click, drag. There we go. All right. So that's going to be our new army's front line. He's got seven divisions. Let's see if we can give him one more. Ah. OK, pause, pause, pause. OK, Ledger D, Romania accepts economic integration. OK, great. Integrate war economies. OK, does Japan have no limits? World news. OK, so... 
a whole bunch of bonuses there. Let's see now if we... I'll tell you what, we'll go for Naval Effort Part 2, which is, again, a short one, 35 days. But again, we get an extra couple of Naval slots as well as uh, some bonuses for upgrading Destroyer and Light Cruisers. So that will make things twice as quick. Somebody actually left a great comment. You know, I was saying, oh, these should be 50% off rather than 100% bonus. He was saying I was reading it wrong. It actually means... When it says 100% research bonus, what it really should say is 100% faster. So, in other words, twice as quick because it's 100% faster as opposed to the, the, the bonus is 100%. So, uh, you know, it's minor issue. <laughs> in any case, thanks for pointing that out. Okay, let's get that on the go. Free dockyards are available. And... Let's see. Let, well, we need more U-boats, so let's just increase the production. I'll go all the way up to 10. Okay, unpause. Pause. Justification of conquering Friesland, which is this uh, area here, Netherlands. I guess that's a general way of saying it is complete. So, minimum time. Okay. Select the field marshal. Tell him to go. Okay, hit escape. Right click on the next country along. Belgium. Justify. Conquer. Just hit the top state there. Now it's going to take 25 days. Okay. Send. Okay. Hit escape. What says here? Uh, Romania, at least on my game, wants to send me some forces. Again, if this happens to you, great. Accept them. If not, doesn't matter. Three divisions. Okay. Shift, left click on the unassigned divisions. Actually, two of them are ready to go. So with all three of them selected, I'm going to send them to the training army. And with the two that are ready, let's just select those uh, specifically. I'm going to right click on uh, this guy here uh, who was holding the line down here. So let's right click there. Okay, unpause. Available war goal, declare, call allies, go. Okay, 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 okay. Right. Generals moving in. And again, most of this was... I think most, if not all of these divisions, were set to aggressive via the Field Marshal. Yeah, aggressive. Bok, aggressive. Field Marshal here, aggressive. So this goes really quickly. Now, in order that my game doesn't necessarily run away from yours, I'm going to tell my Bok Abbey here, just go normal. So the Panzer guys are still on aggressive. Uh, Bok with his military is just going in a balanced manner. And then that way, again, if you're if you're on the 1st of December, if you're on the 1st of January at this moment in time, that's all cool. You know, so again, as long as we're not too far apart. And again, this looks relatively easy. Don't forget if we right select, these are now, if you take a look here, allied with a whole uh, bunch of countries, uh, the UK amongst others. Um, so expect a moderate amount of resistance. It's not too bad as of yet. Of course, a lot of the British divisions, as, as well as what they're doing in Africa, and that's of course to do with the British Empire and Italy having a stab over there. You've also got some British divisions that wind up in France until Germany move in. And of course, you've got the whole thing there at Dunkirk. Whatever you make of that, why did he let them go? Quick check on the F2. Nothing too major going on there. Hover over naval battle. More green than red. More green than red, so that's all good. Let's right-click, right-click. Quick look on the air. Still got this issue over here in Western Germany, but it's not horrific. Again, it's yellow, so yellow's okay. You know, I mean, not ideal, but it's okay. Red's where it gets to be a problem. So the attack's going well here. Let's pick up pace to level three. This is going to go so quick. Finland and Soviet Union have finished their whole thing. There goes Rotterdam, there goes The Hague, and pause. It's ours. Okay, okay, okay. Right, no reason why not to get this field marshal selected and on a new front line with Belgium. Now, don't forget, once we get through Belgium, 
Because we're already at war with France, there will be no need to declare war on the next country. There will be no new front line. We'll just carry on pushing through. So, with this army group selected, Z, new front line. There we go. And, actually, do you know what we're going to need yet? Because once we get into France, we'll probably need more military divisions, more infantry divisions, at least just to get on with it nice and quick. So I'm going to hit escape. I'm actually going to delete the orders of this field marshal. So again, with the field marshal selected, let's right click to delete the orders, what I've just created. I'm going to bring in a new military division that I'm not currently using. So let's bring this division in, Witzelbon, <laughs> whatever he was. Left click to select him. Right click to delete any orders that he has, which is just hold the area over here. Okay. Right click under the field marshal to bring him across. So now our field marshal has got four armies under his control. Two panzer divisions, two infantry divisions. So escape to deselect Witzelbaum because we want to select the whole lot. Left click army group one, which selects all of them. Press Z and left click for a front line. Remember, we need that planning bonus, uh, so press X and draw the front line. Um, that'll do. Okay, unpause. I'm just going to slow down time just a tad. We'll hit escape. Oh, what's this? Non-aggression pact with Finland. Okay, I'm going to accept. In my opinion, Finland not attacking us is a good thing because if we take a look at the... Uh, 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 this, uh, the layout over here in my the way I like to play is to take both Norway and Sweden okay there's a lot of good resources to be had over there not least access to the sea Finland if we zoom in forms a nice blocking force between what will be our country and what will be Russia in other words our front line will be much shorter if we don't have to worry too much about what's going on up here if we do not assign the peace agreement with Finland, not only may that be an issue, but we may also have Finland to deal with in addition to Russia. Now, I'm not saying it's impossible, but, you know, got to think about these things. That isn't to say we might not leg on the peace agreement in a few years' time if it's suitable to us. But for now, let's accept. So we'll uh, click to open it. Okay, absolutely beneficial to us at this time. Quick look on the insufficient resources then. Again, just a minor reduction with tungsten by one piece, so I'm not concerned. Fuel-wise, we're doing okay. So we've got two-thirds of fuel available to us. So let's unpause. I'm going to pick up the pace. Pause. Air experience, doctrines, and again, just get this as and when yours pops up. Just continue until you've got all the way down, okay? Thankfully, these are not either or. We can have them all, so that's the plan. We're going to keep going until we get all the air. And again, if you ever want to see exactly what benefits, just knock yourself out and read it. But, you know, everything is good. You know, you're not going to get anything that sets you back. Unpause. Pause. All right, we've got some free civilian factories because some of what we've asked it to do has been completed. Now, remember, as we attack through France, we need to supply our armies, okay? Armies need supplies. So if we come over to the F4 tab to view supply, we can see, for example, this supply hub here is currently being supplied with this very roundabout way. Take a look at the direction the train's going if I hover my mouse Ah, if I zoom in. There we go. That's perhaps a bit away. That's a long way round. Um, I'm thinking it's going to be worthwhile to improve the bridges. So if we come over to our construction tab, select the railway option here. You see this bridge here over the Rhinelands is only a level one bridge. Well, we need to get a lot of supplies through. So let's upgrade that by clicking on it to a level two. Now, same could be said over here. This Brandenburg leads off by a level 3, but then here we've only got a level 1. So let's click to upgrade that to a level 2. This railway line here is only a level 1. Again, click to 2. Click this little bit here to 2. Not only is there an advantage that we can get more stuff through a level 2 railway line, but if the air enemy aircraft bomb the level 1 railway line, that then basically knocks it out. If they bomb a level 2 railway line, it brings it down to a level 1 so we can still get stuff. So there's at least two advantages to upgrading 
railway lines there. So let's get that done. And elsewhere, I think we can leave alone. Okay, let's hit escape. F1, unpause. And this is sometimes where you need to think ahead before you actually do the attack when it comes to things like supply, especially. New technology, okay. Okay, let's pause. Regardless, again, this is like a news piece. So again, from our point of view, we got to tell our people, it's the Belgians. They're the ones that are posturing. They're the threat. We've got to go in to spread freedom, to do it right, to liberate the people. Sounds like the sort of thing you hear today, right? Okay, let's come over to the research slot. And again, let's have a little look here. So we've got this unlocked. Let's see what else we can get. These are two years ahead of time, so very inefficient. Tank-wise... A year ahead of time, not great. Artillery-wise, well, look at this, 0 0.01. So if we take a look, we're like four or five days away. So let's unlock these. And again, remember, the equipment first, the, the tactics, and so on second. So again, in this case, this here is the equipment. This is like a better tactic. This is the equipment. Because when you unlock these, you need to build new stuff at the factory. When you unlock these, it's just an automatic instant improvement across the board. So... You may, you're best off unlocking things first that need to be changed at the factory and then get the instant bonus second. So let's go for the anti-air, then we'll go for the anti-tank, then of course this one. Okay, anti-air, let's go. And again, there are so many benefits to be had with improved technology. You can pause and read the individual stats if you wish. But... Okay, so stuff going on in the uh, with China there and uh, Japan. Pause free civilian factories. Um, okay, so let's get more military factories produced. Let's put three into Upper Austria. Shift left click. Select our synthetic in refineries. We've got space for one down here, so let's get one there. Uh, I want to improve the road network at Tyrol, so road infrastructures, shift, left click, let's get that upgraded. Of course, we could help uh, Italy, but, you know, there's no need, they can do their own. Uh, road networks in northern Germany, something to consider, because, of course, I'm looking to ramp up our Navy production as the game goes on. So, um, let's shift, left click here, and uh, how are we doing there? That's... Uh, I may actually just left click on this state once, not that we want to necessarily build more stuff, but because when we look to attack this way, a higher infrastructure would help when it comes to our supply. So let's click there. Also wouldn't hurt to uh, air bases. Let's click on that to improve the air bases over here as well. Perhaps this one here, especially when it comes to attacking to the north. So wouldn't hurt to upgrade this. Click, 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 click. To, I don't know, to four or five levels. Okay, let's hit escape. F1 on pause. Days away. We're, I'll tell you what, by the end of this episode, we're going to have not just Belgium, but France. And it's going to happen really quickly. Here we go. Justification complete. 5th of January, 1940. This is going to go fast. Going to be mind-blowing. Okay. Before we unpause, quick look at F3. We've had these guys training at Brandenburg, and not only that, they're ready to go. So let's select all the guys. You can see the icons here that are training. So shift, click, click, click. I'm going to stand, cancel the training and give them either air superiority or close air support. Whatever it is that they're doing, give them their job. Okay, we've still got this issue in the Alpine region. So one of my fighter squadrons that's been training, I'm going to send him... Uh, down to southern uh, Germany or Austria or what was Austria to the airbase and right click. And again, that's to support uh, our Italian friends. Okay, we've got this uh, this one here. And again, if you're wondering now, well, hang on, who's got what orders? Okay, we've got the icon here. So let's go through them one at a time. It's these three guys that you see here selected in red. So let's give them to this particular field marshal here. So right click. And sorted. Escape. Who else? Left click. It's our naval bomber here. And you see they're standing by. Doesn't have an order. Okay. Let's give him naval strike as well as navy patrol. I'm going to fly him up to our airbase here in Jutland. And you see here there's this tiny little area of sea Danish belts that doesn't currently have any aircraft patrolling. 
We've got this area, Eastern North Sea. We've got the Lower Baltic Sea, this little area. So let's actually set this aircraft to start looking for ships in that area as well. Okay, slow time down to the minimum. Available war goal, declare. Backed by the UK, so of course, we're at war with the UK anyway, so that's not going to make any difference. Call the Allies, why not? Let's go. Okay, okay, okay. Escape. F1, come pause, go. Belgian join the Allies, okay. And there is our attack. So as soon as we get, uh, well, basically once we get to the end of Belgium, I'm just going to draw another arrow. I'm actually going to wait until they accomplish it, though, to make sure that we don't lose our attack bonus from the initiative. And we'll go through just to the other side of, uh, of Paris, because once you get sort of this northern area of uh, France, and you just need sort of there, really, together with the capital, that's that's enough for the French to offer to capitulate. So let's pick up the pace. Level three. You see, it's going very nicely. Pause. All right, Belgium has capitulated. We get a bunch of stuff there. Very nice. Okay, great news. All right, so this front line is not exactly perfect. So, and you can see this is one of those times where you need to micro a little bit in the game. So what we'll do is with the field marshal selected, you can see he's trying to send everybody over there, which is not suitable. I'm going to right click to delete all the existing orders. Okay, we're then going to hit Z. Click on the border there with France, and that's going to redraw the front line, which is a lot better than sending everybody up by Dunkirk. Then press X to draw the front line. And again, we don't need all of France. We just need the sort of the northern areas and around Paris. So something like that will be more than enough. There we go. So I see no reason why not to keep pressing on the attack. As again, there's a small negative modifier because the divisions are still preparing. That's obviously going to take a long time. But as you see, everything else is in the green because we're good. So let's just go for it. Okay. Slow down time. Escape. Unpause. We'll deal with the factories and stuff next episode because this is going to be pretty quick. Let's press plus. Quick glance onto the air. It's more or less green, which is great. A little bit of yellow. Not the biggest problem in the world, but it's mostly green. Perfect. Okay. Back to the F1. And this attack is just going like scary, scary quick. We're only on level three on the speed. And look at it. Hot knife through butter. France has no chance whatsoever. Look at the blistering speed that our panzers are just cutting through the enemy lines. Paris is on the brink. Dunkirk's gone. Where you look, we've got green balls. Paris is surrounded. In we go. Paris has fallen. Pause. Uh, there we go. Triumph in France. The option is Germany conquers all or Vichy France. Just going to say, unless you're trying to do a very specific thing, I highly recommend going Vichy France. Okay. And there we go. So they're basically... Uh, Vichy France takes over parts of uh, southern France as well as elsewhere, swaths of Africa and so forth. They are, I won't necessarily say our allies, but they're not a problem. They're kind of a neutral force until a bit later in the game. Fall of Paris, there we go. We get a whole bunch of stuff, very good. France has capitulated, great. And occasionally when you do this, you may see a small patch of France and you'll look, you'll zoom in. That's not because France didn't capitulate properly. It's usually because you've got a single British division somewhere. Um, and it's, if you do ever see a single division somewhere, it's just a case of sending your tanks on a beeline uh, to that location. Coming over here, here we see Vichy France. So they've taken over the south. And again, that, that's great. That suits us fine. Now that we control all of France, of course, we get access to all the naval yards and dockyards here on the western end of France, which, of course, is hugely beneficial to our U-boat campaign uh, over there in the sea. Let's come over to National Focus. Why not? Let's uh, wrap this uh, Let's wrap this up properly. 
Uh, Air Innovations is not something we've looked at yet. Let's get this one done. We get a couple. Take a look at that of uh, cost reductions. Uh, so we may as well get this and make use of them. Although Air Experience is something that comes in pretty thick and fast throughout the course of the game. So let's get that on the go. Okay. Three military factories. How many? Currently, look at this. We've got 126 in total. We're using 115. Don't forget, as we conquer enemy territories, we get use of some, but not all of their factories. One thing we've not looked at yet, so let's have a little look. So uh, click on the flag up top and take a look at Occupied Territories tab. I'm going to rank them by resistance, which is uh, something worth doing once in a while. And basically, the higher up this list of country is, the more of a problem it is. And so... Not too bad. Poland, we've got 18% resistance. Now, if it does get higher, we could say switch over from military governor to something like martial law. Where it's going to take us more guys to perform martial law, but their resistance won't be as bad. But aside from... And again, you can have a play with this yourself and look at what all the different modifiers do and how it impacts things. But what I want you to notice here, the big takeaway, is... Here we see, if we hover over, there are 34, and again, this is just in relation to Poland or whichever country it is you're hovering over. So here we go, Poland. There are 34 million people in the state we're controlling. In other words, Poland. And with our current laws and all the other modifiers, we are able to access 0.3% of that population, which happens to be, in this case, 115,000 men. What that means is, just as in real life, once the Germans moved in and they occupied an area, most of the people just basically got on with their lives in the way that it was before. Um, the only difference was there was a new sheriff in town, but otherwise people just got on with it. However, the Germans, if not immediately, but certainly as time went on, began putting up posters, basically offering to recruit young people that were willing, that wanted to. Okay, Nobody was forced because, of course, it's very difficult to force somebody to fight for you that doesn't want to, you, you would just turn on your own guys. But uh, for the people that did, they were able to join up. And I think this particular mechanic here in the game is, is representative of that. And as you can see, it's a tiny percentage, 0 0.3. The longer we stay there, the, the lower the resistance gets, the more we start aligning the country, if possible. Gradually, that number will increase. And we'll, we'll I'll try and take a look at that in other times next start along and again hugely important we are able to access in this case 40 percent of the factories in poland so there are 50 factories in poland as it says there made up 23 civilian 27 military and we are able to access 40 percent of them and again that's a figure that will rise or fall depending on how compliant they are and what sort of laws we have in place so Nearly half is obviously a very good thing, and so if we were to surmise that, I'd say we're basically getting 10 civilian factories from Poland, and currently maybe 11 military factories, based on what we see right there. So, and again, that applies for every country, so Lithuania, of course, much smaller, uh, much fewer factories. As you can see, we're only able to get 31% of theirs versus 40% uh, of Polish Denmark, 26%, uh, so on and so forth. So again, always a reason to gain into or, or to move into a country. Even if you only get a few of their factories, it's still better than nothing. Although, remember, we have to use mil military manpower to try and uh, set up shop in these countries and suppress uh, any goings-ons. All right, I think that about wraps this one up. We may as well get the next guy um, declared. As you see, Russia here has uh, come right up onto the border. Uh, free military factories, let's just get through of these before we end. So I think the way I'm going to do this is look to recruit as a one-off a whole bunch of new uh, infantry. Now, we've got 39 army experience, so let's actually look at putting field hospital in. So it's not something we've done yet. Remember, it's not just a case of, oh, I've unlocked it. Let's put field hospitals into the whole lot. Because, again, take a look. Field hospital, bunch of bonuses. However, if I was to save this, look how much stuff. We're going to need an extra 53,000 people. Okay, that's not a problem at all as it stands. 
However, what is a bit of a problem, we're actually going to need over 3,000 support equipment. Okay, we got 6,000, but it, we're going to lose over half of it on this upgrade. Trucks, we're going to need 2,100 trucks. Now, in addition to all of that stuff, which may seem okay, there's also, remember, trucks need fuel. Trucks are going to wear out the attrition and so on and so forth. So it's like, are we able to not only make the change, but fund it in the long term? in terms of fuel, attrition, so on and so forth. So I'm going to actually surprise me to see that I had not just enough. I thought I'd have enough, but actually we've got more than enough uh, to, to make this change. Otherwise, I would have done an incremental update, kind of like what we did with the anti-air two or three episodes ago. So I'm just going to save this. And don't forget, once we do this, the change happens wherever the infantry divisions happen to be, the new equipment rolls up onto the scene and they look around and say, what do we do with this? And because of that, the experience drops down. I've said this before, but worth mentioning. I would not do this in the middle of a fight because, you know, that they're needed. That's going to be problematic. We are not in the middle of a fight. Let's just get it done. Okay. Various benefits to having a field hospital um, do check out uh, my video that breaks it down into more detail, but I'm just going to go very basic and say the takeaway or the upshot of it is having a field hospital when people get killed rather than the game just writing them, them off, which is the normal way, having a field hospital there, they will actually still be killed, but then return into the central manpower man pull. I know that seems kind of weird and daft. It's just the way that the game does it. You'll also not lose as much experience. And I think that's the uh, 10 second takeaway there. Russia is looking kind of menacing, having now taken over this whole area. And again, they're not just going to magically attack, but I would feel a little bit better having a few guys over there. And again, with the free military factories being available, I'm going to hire new soldiers on a one-off and then we'll see what we're most short of. So let's come over to recruit new divisions. And although we've got these infantry here that again being repeated over and over, that doesn't stop us setting up a second line over here. Uh, assigning a location, I don't know, let's go for Dresden. And then just recruiting these one time. So... This now will be like a separate line that's just happening the once. I'll tell you what, I'll just move it. Uh, I'll just move it to the top of the list so I'm not covering it up. There we go. So this uh, here is just the one time. We'll add divisions in. Let's put 10 divisions. Do we have enough equipment? Yes, we do. Okay, let's go up to 20 divisions. We could uh, click shift just to add several at once. Do we have enough? Yes, we do. Okay, shift click 30. Do we have enough stuff? I'm surprised, but yes, we do. I think 30 divisions is more than enough to recruit in one go. So let's collapse that menu and taking a look at logistics. Watch what happens here when I unpause. Give it a day. Pause. There we go. See all that stuff vanish there? Again, don't pay it too much attention to this figure here because, of course, it's just from one day to the next. That's why there's a huge drop. But what is important is we've got enough of everything. So if we were seeing here, what are we most short? Well, anti-tank weapons, maybe. Anti-air, a little bit. Um, okay. Medium tanks as well. So medium tanks, big reason to produce more stuff. Uh, some more anti-tank stuff. Okay. Rudolf S, of course, flew over to the UK. Goodness knows what for. Of course, there's a whole thing about that. Ended up uh, being put in a prison all by himself for the end of his life. An entire prison for himself. Once a few other senior German officials uh, died off. Nobody was allowed to talk to the guy either, which was interesting. Makes you wonder sort of what secrets he may have had. In any case... Free military factories. We're still kind of short on tungsten, but you know what? Let's ramp up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. Ten factories producing medium tanks because we're going to look to get these on. We're 17 pieces short of tungsten, so let's select this. And again, whether yours is 16 or 19, you know, as long, 
And the way we're going to plug our gap is trade with Portugal. It may be tempting to trade with Sweden, but again, we're going to think about attacking those guys before too long. So Portugal, and don't forget this button here, magically select how many you need. Um, let's click OK. The yellow, remember, we've got an excess amount of rubber there. So let's come over to the rubber, Siam. Let's drop this down. And again, there to how many you need. In this case, zero. OK. Let's hit escape. Uh, we will still have four pieces of rubber, I think. So let's look at up in our aircraft. I'm actually going to go for the ones with the yellow arrow there where there's a sort of a shortage. So let's go. Put two factories there and two factories there. There we go. That'll do. Problem resolved. Speaking of air, come over here. F3. I just want to get some of these recruits uh, uh, out the way before we end the episode. So add a new air wing. Uh, let's get two fighter wings. Click, click. There we go. Uh, anything else further down? Actually, we've got loads of old fighters here as well. So let's just recruit one more. So that'll be three air wings on the go. Don't forget, it'll automatically up all of these to 100 and it'll pull aircraft out from the entire pool. Uh, close air support, that's ready to go. Actually, these two together make it 200. So let's get two uh, close air support squadrons in and that's going to be it. Okay. Making sure we don't include those two that are ready to go. All of these that are deploying, let's get them training. Let's select on the free dockyards for the Navy. Okay, so oh, this battleship is almost complete. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is just put all the shipyards onto the second one. I realize, you know, we're short on chromium, but I mean, this battleship is so near finished uh, 27th of January, so it's, it's going to be pretty quick. We'll put the rest of the dockyards available as and when they come onto this destroyer. Okay. Unread reports. Green is good. Right click. F1. And maybe tempted to get Luxembourg out the way. You know what? Let's just do it. Right click onto Luxembourg. Justify. Conquer. Luxembourg. Okay. Well, now, last thing that remains is... Oh, look at this. We do actually have a... Bri How did I not see this? Couldn't see the wood for the trees. So here's this example. Look at this. An area of France that still belongs to France. Why? Because there happens to be a British division there. Uh, apologies for not seeing that. And again, if this happens to you, just find yourself the nearest panzer divisions. Reason being, they're best at the attack and they're very quick to get there. And just right click onto where they are. So let's unpause. Quick as that, right? <laughs> Yours may take a little longer, especially if you have to sort of travel across the country like that. But in any case, problem uh, or job is solved. So let's stop those. So yeah, here's my division that's going to take Luxembourg. Uh, it doesn't really matter. They're going to be pretty easy to take. Um, let's just go with Rom. I'll tell you what, let's not use Rommel because he's already vetted up. He's not really got anywhere else to go, at least his divisions. Rommel himself can't. If we say take a look at his skill level there, we see attack. He's now a level five. If you remember when we started the game, he was a level. He was, I think, he was a level four at attack. Um, so let's pick this guy here. He's a level three on attack. Let's get his motorization up to level three as well. So just with this guy selected, Heinz Guderian, press Z. There's the front line, <laughs> completely encircled. Press X. And the attack is, well, there's nowhere else to go. Luxembourg just is a solitary tile. We're not given order for the rest of the guys until that job's done, but we may as well think about a front, not a front line, but a few coastal defences. So currently we've got a door that's wide open in northern France and the British may come across and it'll be very quick for them to quickly take over because we've got nothing there to defend with. So I think what I'm going to do, although this isn't necessarily a good long-term way, way to play, but short-term, while you get more divisions that you can use for defense. So again, if we come over here to recruit these cheapo ones that we've done. So let's, for example, train some of those guys. Location, well, I don't know. Let's go Nuremberg. Just one time, and we need, I don't know, let's produce like 24 divisions. There we go. 
And thankfully, we've got enough equipment for all of that. So once those divisions are ready, we'll, we'll line them up in northern France. But while we wait for them, this guy here that we had sent over here in case anything kicked off uh, untoward, right-click to delete any existing orders, area defense, and I'm just going to go all the way around the edge of France. So click, 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 click. Click, click, click. There we go. This area is already covered. Oh, we missed a gap here. So this area here. There we go. Click. Okay. So he said, oh, well, you need 58 divisions to do this. Well, no, we don't because we're not interested in covering railway lines. So let's get rid of that. Oh, he still needs 57. Okay. We're not interested in covering the air bases. So forget that. Oh, well, 53. Well, forget the forts. Okay. Still 53. Forget victory points. That's basically cities. Don't need to guard the cities. Okay, need 41. What we're really interested in is naval bases. So forget guarding the coastline. Don't forget the enemy is attacking. They can, of course, attack at the coastline, but what they really need is naval bases. So as long as we're able to defend the naval bases, we'll be okay. It actually needs 14 divisions to do this. What about if we go for forts? Well, I guess there aren't any because it doesn't actually change the figure. So let's stick with 14. If we go for air bases, now we need 20. And again, there's no real advantage in guarding an air base other than it, if you have a division there and the enemy happens to show up, it makes, obviously, they've got a fight before they get it. Um, however, the real issue is that they don't get towards the harbour. So that'll do 14. And again, once those cheapo defensive divisions come around, we'll actually... Get a new army out there to fulfill this job. All right, unpause. And I think that's going to wrap this one up. Insufficient resources, uh, that minor shortage on chromium. As soon as that battleship finishes, that's going to be okay. I think this will be a great way to end. End of January. Question of Yugoslavia. This is a personal choice. Uh, our patience with them is running thin. So this is going to more lead you towards a, a war against Yugoslavia. Uh, if you go more along the lines of Tiger Cares, not for the opinion of the mice, uh, there's more of a chance that Yugoslavia may join you. Let's go for, let's let's go for, we don't care for the opinions of mice. Because I've all, always found that if you go for Yugoslavia, it always ends up in the hands of Italy anyway. Not that that's a problem because Italy's on our side, but I'm just saying. Um, although I'll tell you what then, let's go for it. Our patience with them is running thin. Let's mix things up. Go on then. All right, we do happen to have a few guys down there holding the line. And again, if they kick off, we're going to need to get more guys down there, but at least that will buy us some time. So let's keep things going. More green than red. Okay, right click. More green than red. Right click. Speed up time. Pause. There we go. 1st of February 1940. That's going to be a great way to end the game. Of course, we're still waiting for the justification to complete from Luxembourg. That'll be next time. Then we'll go ahead taking uh, Sweden, Norway, and then we'll take a look at knocking out the UK. Why not? <laughs> Until next time, take care. Bye bye.